Okay, welcome. This mini lecture will be focusing on annotation skills for reading. Um, subtitle here is empowering your reading process. So this skill is essential to build and develop and put into your um, success uh, tool belt, your student success tool belt, to help you be ready to read and understand texts on a deeper level. So let's jump right into it. So first of all, we have to kind of uh, set down a definition. What is annotation? What does this word mean? So annotation is essentially a reading process where you are trying to refine uh, what you're learning from the reading. So you make uh, targeted notes that will help you to take the juice or to squeeze the best juice out of uh, the reading that you're doing. So it's a process of being switched on you're, you're going to be an active reader, and you're not just passively letting your eyes glide down over the um, page. You're, you're constantly double-checking and thinking, is this important? Uh, why is it important? What connection does it have to larger ideas within the course? Um, so one way that you can help yourself to maintain uh, an active mindset when you are reading is to first, before you even start reading, Think about what your purpose is. So why have you been asked by your instructor to read this document or this text or this textbook or this article? Um, so here are a few of the possible um, purpose focal points. So it could be for summary. It could be for analysis. It could be for recall. It could be for tests or also research. Now, if you're reading for these different purposes, it would mean that you should be annotating in a slightly different way. Right, so annotation for summary, you're trying to kind of track the core ideas in some sort of a timeline, in some sort of a chronological feature. But again, for summary, you don't need too many of the specific details. Um, you're just trying to get a large overview. For analysis, you would be uh, looking more specifically at um, some sort of a uh, cross connection or a um, even a difference, you might be you might be asked to write an essay, and then when you're reading for analysis, you might be thinking, how does this fit into the framework of my essay? Um, now, recall and tests, they're kind of connected. Um, so you are kind of would be reading, and then you would be thinking to yourself, okay, there might be a test on this later. What might the teacher ask me? So there's going to be sort of a different lens in your brain when you're doing your uh, annotation. And the final option here is research. So um, if you're reading for research, you would be looking for data that supports your position and data that is uh, easy to cite, easy to paraphrase, clear and um, powerful in terms of adding support to either a paper you're writing or a presentation that you're making. Okay, so this process, it can take longer when you start doing it. Um, but as with any process, the more you practice it, the more skilled you should get at it. Um, but it, but the other point to point to to kind of draw to the to the forefront here is that even though it might take longer while you're doing your kind of first initial annotation, when you come back to study, those notes, those highlights, those marks on the page are going to make it much easier for you to recapture the most important points from that reading. So even though you might have to invest a little bit more at the beginning, you're going to reap the benefits at the end. Okay, so the other point here is that it helps you to organize vast quantities of data. So like one of the things that university students find is that they're um, being asked to read so many chapters, pages, articles in, in up to four or five classes. So how can you possibly keep all of that data organized in your mind? Well, one of the ways is to be mindful, to be focused, to have your purpose aligned, and also to take notes and then not only just take them initially on the page, but if you want it to be really organized, you can then transfer your notes over onto study cards. Um, so each article that you read and annotate, you could do a set of five to six study cards that kind of condense the main ideas. And that's why I've, I've said here that it's, it's a very useful university skill um, because it can help you to organize vast quantities of information that you're trying to take in. Okay, so let's talk a little bit now about annotation methods. So number one, you're going to need some highlighter pens at your disposal uh, or some different colored uh, ink pens so that you can highlight or underline things that jump out as key points. 
So when you see these key points, it's a really good idea to summarize them next to that paragraph. Um, as we know, when we're reading, within academic writing, the most important idea will always be in the topic sentence of each paragraph. So even if you have limited time, you should be reading all the titles, subtitles, and those topic sentences for the paragraphs, and then highlight the ones that jump out at you, and then make a little note beside it to kind of condense that value. Now also, you'll notice on the last slide and also on this side slide, I've started to point out that you can develop your own shorthand for taking notes. Um, and I really encourage you to build your own system. Um, what you'll find is initially it seems like, okay, well that wouldn't really solve that, or really, wouldn't really solve my problem, wouldn't really save me that much time. But actually what you'll find is once you kind of get your system built up, it actually does overall uh, condense the, the note-taking process, makes it take up less space, and it's quicker to do. Um, I also like to color code ideas. So like maybe you're reading an article and you're thinking, okay, some of this I might have to study for a test. Some of this I might use for research. Some of this I might want to uh, use in my in my in my essay. So maybe you do a, a code for each. So yellow might be study points, green might be citations, and then pink might be uh, something that you want to take away for your own knowledge. And then once you've got your color coding system, you use that uh, throughout uh, the note taking process. Um, so then, as I mentioned on the last slide, once you've annotated your entire article, it's a really good idea to condense the kind of core value from the article onto five or six study cards. And the way I usually use that is you'll put the main idea on the front, and then on the back you put the details. That can also help you to study uh, effectively. Okay, another point here to mention, which has kind of already come up, is that one of the main methods um, that annotation uh, can be used powerfully is when you're trying to write citations. So I always encourage students to take note of language that is powerful um, and that, that kind of jumps out at you as being well-written sentences or really keen insights. You're going to want to focus on those, put a little APA beside it. That means it probably could be used for a citation. And finally, um, how can we use these methods uh, later to kind of make our study process more effective, more efficient, and more powerful? Well, I've already given a few of the codes, a few of the clues or, or, or methods right there. Use your study cards, review them regularly, show, show the, the core concept on the one side of the page, and then see if you can recall the specific data from the back of that study card before you flip it over and check it. Um, as I mentioned in the initial reading, um, you're not going to learn anything with a single touch of the information. You need to retouch information several times and you need to try to recall the information creatively um, to take the best value away from it. Okay, let's see what a demo might look like. So here is uh, the, the reading that we're going to be working with today. So I'm going to demonstrate what my process would be uh, if I was starting out to annotate these two paragraphs. So the article actually will go on to be a few pages long and, and you're going to be asked to try to work your way all the way through it. Um, but I'm just going to start with what I would do for these two paragraphs. So here we go. So a little more than a year ago on a trip to Nairobi, Kenya, some colleagues and I met a 12 year old Maasai boy named Richard Turi. So I might, I might highlight um, Nairobi, Kenya and then make a comment, right, and you can say location, and then I'm going to write, uh, I'm going to grab this as well, highlight this with green, this is a person, and then I'm going to say um, possibly one of the main uh, characters of this article, good. He told us a fascinating story. His family raises livestock on the edge of a vast national park. Um, and one of the biggest challenges of protecting the animals from lions, especially night. So this is a core concept here. This idea that he is looking at protecting his livestock. So again, I'm going to highlight that with blue.
And you can see I'm starting to use my own uh, type of a shorthand there. Richard had noticed that placing lamps in the field didn't deter lion attacks, but when he walked from field to field with a torch, the lions stayed away. From a young age, he'd been interested in electronics. Okay, so I'm just going to put a note in here. Tech connection. Teaching himself, for example, by taking apart his parents' radio. That's not really relevant. That's backstory. He used the experience to devise a system of lights. That would turn off and on in sequence. Using solar panels. So we're going to add a car battery. and thereby create a sense of movement that he would he hoped would scare off the lions. He installed the lights and the lions stopped attacking. So here, this is interesting. I, I, I want to look at this sentence for uh, a couple of reasons. Now, one of the things that I think is quite relevant here is that we see a storyline developing. Soon the villages villages elsewhere in Kenya began installing Richard's Lion Lights. So I think that's kind of a cool name. If I was going to be um, summarizing this or retelling it or even um, using some, some information in this for a, a presentation of my own, that kind of jumps out at me so that I could say that this is a good hook. Creates interest. Good? Okay, wonderful. Second paragraph. This story was inspiring and worthy of a broad, broader audience that our TED, TED conference could offer. So here is another kind of a location indicator that gives us more information about what we're looking at here overall. Um, setting connection. Good but could offer on the surface. Richard seemed an unlikely candidate to give a TED talk. Unlikely candidate. So this might be particularly relevant here because we are in a speaking class, right? So I would say that this um, connects to core theme in our class. So I would make a note of that. Good. He was painfully shy. His English was halting when he described his invention. Sentences tumbled incoherently. Okay, good. This is kind of something that we should be aware of. Um, and we'll just say, behave to avoid. So that's a bit of a note. Good. And frankly, it is hard to imagine a pre-teacher setting in front of 1,400 people accustomed to hearing from Polish speakers such as Bill Gates, Ken Robbins, Joel Taylor Booth. So I'm going to highlight these individuals because they are being uh, held up as successful speakers. Perfect. Okay, so that's just a very initial look at, at what we're doing here. So you can see that right away uh, I did a few things that are connected to what I was talking about in terms of annotation. I'm highlighting, I'm being active, I'm asking myself questions, I'm trying to see what's happening in the article from a few different perspectives that might match up with different purposes that I have as a reader. Um, so that's just a very quick initial look at how we might go about annotating and today I'm actually going to be asking you to do the exact same process. 